am so excited for today's video. We've actually made a few videos like this about techniques to really help speed up or ramp up your learning, especially when it comes to tech. Technical concepts, whether you're a developer, a designer, whatever the case is, there are some techniques that really make a difference. And we've covered many of them in the past. So you might be wondering, Tiff, well, then what are we doing here again today? Before I get there, two things I need to know, because I just realized this, I haven't shared it with you. I am not in my typical office setup. I am actually in Seattle right now. I'll share with you my view, insert here, for the Lenovo Tech Conference, which is happening tomorrow. And I'm really excited, actually, the day this goes live, I will be at the conference. So it's very exciting. That is why I'm here. That is why I am in this hotel room. Okay, back to the topic though. So what we are learning or focusing on today is really all about how to learn efficiently and quickly without being gimmicky, but things that really work. And most importantly, what is going to be different about today's video is we are doing so with AI. I think it's one of those things I've really seen as a creator online. AI to be a very polarizing topic. People are either for it, they really are excited about how it's helped them build things or help them in their career. And there's other people who are very angry at it. They do not think you should be using AI to learn or to build or grow. And here's the reality. AI isn't going anywhere and it's going to keep on getting better and better. So I'm definitely on the side of let's utilize this while we still learn the fundamentals and basics, but let's utilize this AI to really help us achieve more quicker because I mean, there's only so much time we can do. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you some proven scientific backed techniques to really help you learn faster. These are techniques I use a lot as a content creator, as a software developer who's always learning new technical things, whether I'm working with different companies, building projects, consulting, whatever the case is, I need to always be learning. And tech is moving quicker than ever before. And these are some of the techniques that I'm gonna share with you today, and I'm gonna share with you how to use them. So it's really easy. All right, enough of me talking. Well, we're gonna do more talking, but let's get into it. Now, the first one I really wanna talk about is mindset. It's all about mindset. I know you might be like, Tip, that's not technical or scientific. What are you talking about? But hear me out. This, it really is when it comes down to it. If you are able to shift your mindset into a curious mindset, meaning rather than looking at new tech coming up, whatever it is, whether it be programming, robotics, there's so much new tech coming up. Rather than thinking of it as this big scary thing that you don't have control over or it's gonna overtake your job, etc., shifting it to being more so as to, okay, well, what is all the hype? What are people talking about with it? And being open to that is so key. And I really put this as number one intentionally because it seems so obvious, yet I see every day so little people actually do it. And it makes you stand out so much. Now, to use AI in this example, what I would do is, for me, I love Claude. I'm, I have Claude right here open. Uh, I can share some examples of it as well. What I would do with Claude is, you know what? Let me, let me pull it up right now. Okay, so what I do with Claude is let me share my screen. Okay, so you can see on my screen here, I just started with why is Java so popular? It's not a great prompt by any means, but what it does do is it shows you, let's just start this conversation with Claude, open it up and see where it goes. So it shares with me a bit of why it's so popular. It doesn't really interest me because I know it's popular, but I just wanted to start that conversation. Sometimes my mind gets so blank so easy that just by starting this conversation really helps. So let's go into what are some fun facts? about Java and the history behind it. This is key because I had a, a senior engineer once tell me that if you're making technical choices or decisions, you really need to understand the why behind it. Why are you learning what you are learning? And that is why I always now, when I'm prompting something or learning something new, understand the history behind it. Why did Java come to be? Who built it? Why was it so popular? Why is it so widely used? Versus then just, oh, this is a great programming language. So here you can see here some fun facts about its history. Java was developed in secret for 18 months before being announced publicly. That's kind of cool. Now it will always stick in your head that way. Uh, what else do we have? Three billion devices, Sun Microsystems, now owned by Oracle, once claimed that Java runs over three on over three billion devices worldwide. That is wild. So you can see here, this is just starting to develop or open up that conversation with an AI as to being curious about something. And I think oftentimes, as I mentioned, we just get so in our heads about learning something new that we don't even find the time to be curious. Coming in at number two, this is a really interesting I did for quite a while that I didn't even realize I was doing, which is reverse engineering. So I would oftentimes, in the example of code, but once again, this can be applied to anything, go to GitHub, or even with when I you know, was exploring, understanding design better, 
seeing something that was a final product. So whether it be code, a design, a book, whatever the case is that you're looking to replicate or build or learn, I guess you could say, not replicate, and reverse engineer it as to, okay, so what parts of this do I understand? What parts of this do I not understand? So here's how we can do it with Claude. So we're still in our Java conversation here. Let's go share with me some Java code. Let's make a to-do list with Java. Something simple. Something simple that you're familiar with in other programming languages or and really any concept that you're familiar with, just kind of comparing it to it. So you can see here it is spitting it out. Thank you, Claude, you did a great job. And then now let's start looking at what we know and what we don't know. Okay, we understand classes. Okay, yeah, add tasks, that's cool. System out print, so I guess that's how it prints out things. And just start going through the code. And this can be through with AI in, in the way I just showed you, or it could be going to maybe a human's code. I know, humans still code. And going to GitHub and checking out what other people are coding, cloning the repo coding and cloning the repository to see what, what you understand and also what you can break. Try and comment out some lines to see what breaks what part of the code. That's a really great way to learn as well. And it is really taking that reverse engineering seriously. I, I was scared to do it at first, and then someone said to me, why are you so scared about breaking the code? You can fix it. I'm like, oh yeah. Coming in at number three, this is one of my favorite techniques that, once again, I, I was doing for a long time and I didn't even realize I was doing it. A lot of us do it with something like a rubber ducky. You know what I'm getting at here? This is called the Feynman technique, and this is essentially explaining something to someone as though they were a child. And this is a really great way because if you are able to explain something to someone in the most simplest terms, it means you really clearly understand it. And if you can't, it means there is a ton of room for improvement in how you are explaining things. So let's use Claude again for this example. So in our previous example, we went through the printing out some code, reverse engineering. Now let's get Claude to explain it to us as a way to learn really quickly. Explain to me like a five, Five-year-old, that's pretty young, but let's try it. What is this code doing? Five-year-old might be pushing it. It might be a little young. Maybe we have to go to 12-year-old. I don't know, let's see here. Okay, so first it creates an empty notebook for you. Ask what you want to do, gives you four choices. If you want to add something, the robot asks you what you want to add, it writes it down. Okay, this is pretty cool. I mean, we can keep on going up in age, you know, but this for this example, it really does what I wanted to highlight, which is, it breaks down what you are learning in a way that anyone can understand. And then at least at a very high level, listen, understanding this from a child's point of view isn't going to make you a better coder or whatever the case is you're learning. But what it will do is give you a bigger picture, a full understanding, a comprehensive understanding as to what it does. So then your mind can start breaking it down piece by piece, which I find really helpful. This technique is just, I, I don't know, it's its really changed my, my view on learning. You've probably seen a ton of my videos on Instagram or other platforms where I break down te tech topics like what is Docker, what is, I just did one on what is RAM, like different things like that in a way that anyone hopefully can understand because these tech concepts shouldn't be gated. They shouldn't be kept secret. It's something, we, everyone uses tech, so we should all understand what is going on. We get passionate about that. Coming in at number four, this is a quick one. We're gonna go pretty quick through number four. I don't need to show you an example because it is simply time boxing. Time boxing is so key, especially as we continue to get more things on our plate as we get older. With time boxing, I find learning something new, it almost holds me accountable because I know I have limited time to learn this. So I'm, I think, okay, you know, I woke up an hour early because I really wanna learn this, I need to. But with that, you know what else I'm gonna add for this one is motivation. You need the motivation slash discipline. Now these are two very different things, but they do go hand in hand because without discipline, oftentimes you lack motivation and same with motivation. You can have all the motivation in the world, but if you are not motivated, you're not gonna get anything done. So being able to have both is key, especially discipline. And this is a harder one to do. A lot of times for discipline, you might even need to have someone hold you accountable because learning something new, even if you see the motivation side of it, whether it be financial or moving up in your career, anything like that, that's great. But that's so short term because right when you start learning something, your brain automatically gets rewarded with the, the idea of what could be, and then you already meet those needs, if that makes sense. Whereas if someone is holding you accountable, you know you need to keep on pushing through. So time boxing and having someone to hold you accountable is key. And unfortunately, the robots aren't quite there to hold us accountable, but we could probably write a script to do that, to like automate every morning it sends us 
you know, that we can't access anything until we learn something. Ooh, should we build that? Comment below if we should build that next. And coming in at number five, this one is key. Use AI to help you create a roadmap. This is really key because nowadays AI can do things like pull in resources for you, give you how many, really break, you know what, let me show you. This is better shown than just talked about. So let's go like this. Create for me a roadmap that is over three months long where I spend one hour a day learning how to code in Java. Provide resources for me for each plan that you give. Get detailed. Let's see what it does. I love waiting for the response. It's generating, three month long plan. Let's see what we got cooking here. Well, it's going, let's go back to the top. So it goes with month one, Java basics and OOP. Uh, week one to two, set up Java development kit and integrated development environment. Learn the basics, understand the control flow, practice with simple console program. Okay, so for resources, the next thing I would do is because right now it's sharing some resources, but it didn't link them out, which sometimes you don't want to click on links for that AI provides, but in this case I do. So I would ask it to provide me the actual links to these resources. But this is really good. It breaks it down and we can even get more specific. We could say, okay, but how much time should I spend on each thing? How many hours should I spend on each topic that you're providing every single week? And this isn't something that used to exist, but now with AI, it's like your companion that you can constantly be learning together almost, which is pretty cool. And creating this roadmap that will hold you accountable. Okay, those are my top five tips to really help you learn quickly anything tech related, technical, even if you're a non-technical person, but maybe you're on the business or product manager side and you want to take your career to the next level, this is going to help you so much. These techniques using AI, as I mentioned, we went through everything with Claude, to learn even on the business side or technical side about these topics, it's gonna change the way you learn and you're gonna be able to learn so much faster. The last tip I wanna add actually is, is like a five and a half tip, if you will, is talk to talk to the AI. Now, you can do this with ChatGPT where it's you know, their voice assistant and have a conversation with it. I find that's a really great way as well, even if I'm walking and I want to make a to-do list or reaffirm something that I recently learned just by talking to it is another great way too. All right, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech, coding, AI, future tech, all the good stuff. And I'll see you all soon. Thanks everyone.